Hello, I'm Sean Paul. I'm a missionary down here in Honduras. And today we're going to talk about tilapia in your aquaponics system. But before we do that, I want to share a little bit with you about us. We have a website. It's MorningstarAquaponics.com. And on this website, we help you build your system. When I started in aquaponics, I read books and so forth, and I could get all the scientific uh, uh, information on, on aquaponics all I wanted, but I could not find somebody that would actually teach me how to build a system. They would reference how to build a system, and they would reference uh, like how big your grow bed should be, uh, how big of a water pump you should have, but they would never ever give you a step-by-step -step process in actually building it. And that's what we do. We wrote a 43-page ebook that you can download, and we have a 45-minute complimentary video that goes along with that. And, and then uh, within the ebook, we have diagrams, drawings, materials list, uh, tool list. So literally, you could start building your system today. So just go ahead and check out our website, and uh, you'll see all the information there. Again, it's MorningStarAquaponics.com. Now, regarding tilapia, uh, we raise tilapia. Uh, that is just an easy, easy fish. It's readily available here in Honduras. And, um, and tilapia is not as sensitive as some other fish, so it's a little bit easier to raise. So that's why we focus on tilapia. Now, in the aquaponic system, uh, there's a you know methodology and what you're trying to attain. Do you want to breed your own atop, uh, tilapia? Do you want to uh, not breed tilapia? Do you want to buy tilapia from a, a, a nursery or so forth? So you have to consider all these options. Now, as far as if you're going to like have a mixture of male and female in your system, you definitely want to understand sexting. Uh, you want to be able to look at a, a fish and determine if it's a male or female. It's very important because if you have too many males and some females, you're going to get a lot of aggression and you're going to get fighting within your system. Literally in our system, I, I had a, 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 a female that was producing very well, but the male broke her jaw. So, uh, you know, because of the aggression of the male. So you just have to be cautious about this. So I'm going to put up a picture here, and in the picture you can see a male and a female and, um, and how we go ahead and do our sexting. Now, what we do is we use food coloring and a magnifying glass. Um, I've sexed uh, males and females uh, at three months old. You know, it's not as easy as maybe something that's six months old, nine months old, a year old, but you can do it, and, and sometimes you just got to get the right lighting condition and so forth. But that's what we do. As you can see in the photo, we use food coloring. We just wipe the food coloring in the genitalia area, and it will actually highlight the genitalia. So you can go ahead and see that on a female, uh, the genitalia is a little bit more of a, a curve. It's more of a rounded shape, and then there's a line in the center of the genitalia. And then on the male, there's no line in the center, and it's more of a cone shape or a pointed shape uh, on the male. And then as you can see the dot above the genitalia, that is the anus area. So um, it's really quite simple to go ahead and, and sex the fish. Um, it's, it's not that difficult, but again, when you get a very young fish, that's when it becomes very difficult. Um, so, so just by looking at that picture, uh, you can find that it's very easy. But obviously, while you're doing it, you want to be very gentle with your fish. Uh, you want to go ahead and hold them gently and not very tight. Uh, you don't want to scare them. You don't want to, um, you know, make them, um, you know, upset and stuff. So just be very careful while you're handling your fish. Now, we talked about it a little bit. Um, in the United States, I'm sure there's several nurseries that you can purchase fish from. So you have to make a decision. Now, uh, some nurseries may not do uh, sex reversal and some nurseries may do sex reversal. Also too, uh, there are super males that what they do is they produce 95% offspring of males. And you may say, well, Sean, why do I care if I have males and females? Well, I myself, if I had an aquaponic system, I would, I'm not really, interested in breeding within my aquaponic system so i would just rather have all males in my aquaponic system because then you'll have less aggression within the aquaponic system uh, because obviously they're not going to be fighting over females i don't want to worry about uh, the females releasing uh, their fry within the actual system then you have fry swimming around 
But again, some people want to do that, so you want to talk to your nursery and ask them, can they provide you males and females, and can they provide you all males? And then ask them, how do they get all males? Do they use hormones, or do they use like a super male to do that? So again, there's some tilapia uh, that they'll have a mixture of males and females. They use a hormone. Uh, they feed that hormone to the uh, to the baby fry. That's a baby baby fish, just brand new fish. They feed uh, that fry, that hormone, for the next four to uh, five weeks. If they feed that within their food, and then that forces that baby fry to become a male. And then obviously, again, I explained there's. Uh, uh, a super male that their offspring is predominantly 95% all male. So again, that's something you want to consider. Okay. Now you may say, Sean, I want to get into breeding. Well, then on breeding, you have to consider this: is uh, do you want to breed within the system, or do you want to breed like within an aquarium within within your home? Now, there's a lot of information on how to breed uh, tilapia in aquariums within your home. They're called breeding colonies. Um, I'm going to post a website in the information of this video, and this is a gentleman from Tennessee, um, and he uh, uh, has taught me everything about breeding tilapia within my home. We have an aquaculture system here, and we have breeding colonies set up, and we can breed uh, tilapia within our own home, and we do that all within aquariums. We're going to talk about that in a little bit here. But as far as in the system, again, you want a ratio of males and females, and the ratio is about three females to one male or five females to one male. So that's kind of the ratio that you want in your aquaponic system. And, uh, and I'm going to put up a picture here. You can see this is called like a, a, a fry bucket, so to speak. And what we do is it's a five-gallon bucket. We drill several holes around the bucket and about a half inch hole. So the mother, when, when, when they lay their eggs, the male fertilizes them and they scoop them back up in their mouth. They're called mouth brooders, the tilapia are. They'll hold the eggs in their mouth, they'll rotate them in their mouth, and then uh, they will release uh, the, the fry as they uh, hatch out of their eggs. Then see this, this bucket you make, you put that in the bottom of your IBC tote, and that's a safe place for the fry to go to. And then as they get bigger, they'll go ahead and come out of the bucket and stay out of the bucket. And then obviously they're not going to become fish food for the adult fish. So that's something that you would want to consider as far as um, uh, your, uh, your breeding within your aquaponic system. And again, I know some people that do it, uh, they're successful at it, they, they have no problem doing that. Now. Also, too, you can uh, breed within your aquarium uh, as far as in your home. And here's a picture. You could see that this is a setup of an aquarium. Um, it it uh, has uh, like PVC tubes. They're about three inch, three inch PVC tubes. That's what we use. And we, we zip tie those, those together. And then there's a clay pot in there. The clay pot is for the male. He uses that to, to woo the female in there for her to lay her eggs within the actual clay pot and then he fertilizes them and then again she scoops those up and they will usually hold these in their mouth about 10 to 12 days. Now uh, what we do in our aquaculture system we don't allow her to go ahead and release the fry out of her mouth. We will go ahead in about six to eight days we'll harvest those eggs and we'll put them in a tumbler. This is a tumbler uh, that we use. Uh, we put that tumbler in a 10 uh, gallon uh, system and then as the, uh, what it does is it, it kind of acts as a mother, the, the mouth that tumbles the egg slowly. And then what happens is as is, is the fry uh, comes out of the egg, it will swim out of the tumbler and then go into the 10 gallon system. Now, uh, so that's the two ways that you can breed. But again, you just have to think, is it just easier to go ahead and purchase uh, uh, the actual tilapia? And you might say, well, Sean, I don't have a nursery around me. Well, actually, believe it or not, they can ship uh, 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 fish to you, uh, what we do is if somebody wants to come and buy baby fry from us or fingerlings, we can put them into an oxygenated bag and, and um, you know, as far as like travel time here, it's good for about six to eight hours, but these people, when they ship uh, uh, baby fish, they have it actually set up in such a way that they can ship it through regular shipping and get that, uh, those fish to you. So just look for a nursery in your area. So I hope this uh, helps you out here.
And uh, if you want to message me, ask me questions, uh, feel free. I'll be glad to ask those questions. And again, check out our website. And right there, we can uh, you can download this ebook. You can uh, download the video. And, and like I said, we provide all the information you need. Uh, we're going to save you time. We're going to save you hassles in, in building your system. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.